When I first came to Hollywood, one of the first jobs I had was at MGM, and that was great because, you know, MGM. And um, I was, part of my deal gave me an office and uh, a secretary. And they assigned me a woman named Beverly who was pretty senior in the secretary group. And I think they thought, you know, I was a young kid and I needed somebody who knew their way around the studio, so I got Beverly. And she'd been working at uh, MGM since her first job when she was 18 years old. She'd been working there and she was pretty near retirement, so she'd been there many, many, many years. And uh, at first she was in the typing pool because they used to have to type and do carbon copies of all the revisions and the scripts, so they had a lot of typists. But she had her eye on a job in another department that, that was a job she really wanted. And I knew that and I said, well, what job was it you wanted? She said, oh, Virginia. Virginia and, and fan mail was retiring and I wanted her job because fan mail, you know. And I went, what, what, what was the, she said, well, she was in charge of all the people that read all the fan mail. She kept all the statistics. And I went, what are you talking about? She said, well, we had A fan mail and B fan mail. Now, A fan mail was when they wrote in and they just wanted an autograph for a picture and we would send them, you know, whatever the fan wanted. Um, but the B fan mail, that was what is important because that's what we pulled the statistics from. And I said, what statistics? Well, people would write in and, and say Martha Ray was, uh, was uh, zany or they would say, you know, Garbo was mysterious. And I went, yeah, and what did you do with that? She said, well, Mr. Thalberg, Irving Thalberg, he was, of course, the famous wonderkind of Hollywood production at, at MGM, very famous guy. She said, Mr. Thalberg wanted all the statistics. And I said, and why? He said, well, you know, as soon as something added up enough, there was enough commentary, well, then Mr. Fa Thalberg would issue, uh, you know, uh, instructions to all the departments. And I said, I am not following this at all. What are you talking about? She said, okay, like Garbo, you know, if people wrote in Mysterious and the percentages got high enough on Mysterious, well then Mr. Thalberg would issue the directives to all the departments. Miss Garbo got Mysterious hair, Mysterious eyelashes, Mysterious shoes, everything was mystery. Uh, yeah, I said, you mean you were analyzing what the fans saw and then you were just dressing it up and handing them back exactly what the... She said, yeah, that's how the stars were created. Really? You took just what the public perceived about the person, you just dressed it up and handed it right back. You doubled down on what they already felt. Yeah, that was how the stars were created. And I thought to myself, huh, every actor needs to know what does someone else get about them. Because actors have to make all these choices like haircuts and clothing and all of this kind of stuff. And sometimes they try to pick what's trendy or what looks attractive on somebody. And those are interesting things to pay attention to. But really, the decisions need to be made by heightening the experience that the person looking at it already feels and has. Thus, a picture becomes a preview of the actual experience they might have meeting you in person. Just like the audience went in with a feeling about Greta Garbo and the movies or the press handed that right back to them and made them feel like their sense of a t particular person was not only accurate but dressed up, glamorized, made even more available. That really taught me something. Garbo shoes, <laughs> Garbo hair, um, and I um, began to uh, incorporate that, that idea, that way of thinking, uh, as a part of the work I do. Um, that's all today from the Annals of MGM. Sam, I'll see you next time. Bye.